Ron Savage. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I want to welcome you to the show, Church Reality. Secondly, I want to commend you on your courage for um, speaking out uh, against, you know what I'm saying, these, these types of uh, horrific things that are going on to children and sharing your uh, pain with the world. Um, thank you very much for doing so. Um, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, that was uh, at, uh, at an event. Yeah, that's what I was trying to trying to call you at ten at ten at ten o'clock. My battery is kind of low, but you know I'm trying to stay on as long as I can before my phone comes off. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'll, I'll get right into it. First and foremost, um, you know, w- w- let's talk about uh, you know what I'm saying uh, Africa Bambada's response. Mm-hmm. To what you uh, what you said and what Mr. Campbell said, what others, so many others have said. You've seen the interview, I believe, on Fox. Um, what was your take on the interview with him? Um, I mean, my thing is, I I look at it like this. Um, I'm kind of shocked up them for um, you know. For one, for you know everything that he stands for, and and you know supposed to be truth and stuff like that, and to see him originally um, lie on the Ed Lover show, it kind of shocked me. I mean, how do you say you don't know me? You know, when he was on the Ed Lover show, and then when you're on Fox Five. Then you know me. I mean, which one is it? You know me or you don't know me? You know. And it's almost like his, he's hanging himself with his own tongue. Exactly. You know, and um, you know, but that you know his lie got blown up. Um, when uh, you know, with with Lord Jamal um coming forth and 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 saying that Bam lied and uh. What, what really took it to the next level what level was Ahmed Henderson, um, who was Bam's roommate and um he's the manager for the Zulu Nation and Bam's manager. And, you know, he also said that Bam lied, you know, that Bam knows me. You know, so I look at it like this. I mean <laughs> once you lie about something so simple as knowing somebody, then you're liable to say anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, exactly. Exactly. We also we had we recently had uh, M C Shan on the show. Shout out to M C Shan. He actually uh admitted that, you know, uh he was molested as a child. Um and uh we were talking about the comments that Karis one made on the uh, the Drinking Champ show. Uh, what what are your thoughts on on what Karis one said? Many felt that um, he came off very insensitive, including us. Um, we felt the same way. I mean, I I, I put it like this: um, after that comment that um, Karis one said, um, I'm no longer a Karis one uh, fan. Uh, I I I I think you know like how, how dare you you know you know um he once you know was homeless you know yeah. and 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 he came out he told the story of being homeless and stuff like that and you know people embraced him you know so how dare you you know disrespect myself and other victims around the world, like, who are you? Like, you know, I, if you're a KRS One fan right now, you're a fool, you know, because he tried to come and then tried to clean it up, you know. Forget that cleaning up stuff. What he said, he meant. Exactly. Yeah. That's what. That's what. That's what I said too. And uh, well, like. Uh, Shan kind of implied that possibly maybe uh, KRS felt like that because maybe he touched on him or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, I mean, you know, my thing is like, you know, you know, 
he went in kind of strong, you know, with that comment. So was it, hey, it, maybe it is true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh well you know now that so many people are, are starting to come forward, and plus you know if I had allegations like this thrown at me and I know in my heart I didn't do it, I would be confronting you everywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? I would be doing news interviews everywhere to to uh, clear up my name. And it almost seems like he's just you know. Once in a while, he comes out like he does a little interview here, a little interview there, and and then that's it. You know, um, to me, that's that says something right there. You know, you got to pay attention to the signs and everything. Here, you guys are. You guys have nothing to gain. You know, you, you, you imagine. I, I can't even imagine how hard it was for you to even tell the story. What made you initially want to do it? Was it because of the fact knowing that? Kids might still be in danger. Um, I look at it like this, you know. It's it, it's been bothering me, you know, for a very long time. Um, I I I think about what what happened to me every day of my life. It's 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 always always on my mind, and it's just eating at me and eating at me. And you know, the thing that made me finally break and 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 and, and say this cuz it's like I I just had to get it out um my relationships with with like my ex my exes and with my wife um or every girlfriend that I always had always said the same thing that I didn't know how to show affection um you know I didn't like to be I didn't I did not like to be touched like you know, especially a surprise touch. You know, I have to know that they're going to touch me, you know, and, you know, I have to initiate, you know, the the, the touch, you know, and, and to live like that is, it's, 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 I wouldn't wish this on nobody, you know, and it's, I don't know, I, it was like, it was like God, you know, and, you know, I was just, it was like either I had to get it out then, or it was I wouldn't have been here anymore, you know. And um, I was just sitting down, and I just started crying, like because I just had to get it out. And I started tweeting, you know, saying that Ben Biden molested me. I think at that time I was really pouring out for help, like you know, I was like I had to get it out. And um, Ahmed Henderson, um, he had seen seen the tweet or, or something because I know he called me and he asked me if I can take the tweet down, um, you know, and, you know, after I hung up from him, you know, I started taking the tweets down and with every tweet, it would bother me even more. And I was just, I was just crying because it was like, I finally got the strength to finally say something about it. Like, you know, and then I felt like I was being shut up again after the years of me being scared to finally come out the way I did, you know. You displayed uh, um, a hell of a lot of courage, and like I said at the beginning of the show, I really commend you for that. Um, What about the uh, reaction from the Zulu Nation? Did that uh, come quick enough? Are you satisfied with what they have done? Um, one, you know, I, 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 I felt that, you know, it, it should have came a, way quicker than, than it did, you know. Um, but then, you know, I look at it like this, you know, this is from the, the new leadership and stuff. You know, I am you know, happy that, you know, that they did uh, finally um, apologize. Um, But I know one thing, I know one thing, um, when they very first put out that that, that statement and they said that I was mentally challenged, Mm. um, I look at it like this, um, 
they offended every person around the world who actually is mentally challenged. You know, I'm not mentally challenged. It bothered me. It bothered me when they said that because um, it bothered me because um, when they said that because, you know, me and myself, I have a disability. You know, I have Tourette's syndrome. And Tourette's is it's it's a a, a, a neurological um, disorder. So, you know, I took it very hard, you know, for someone that actually is mentally challenged, and they never publicly apologize to people who are mentally challenged, you know. So. I really think that needs to be um, that needs to be addressed too, and they really need to apologize to to people who are mentally challenged as well. Um, but you know, like I said, you know, um, the old leadership supposedly has set um, uh, stepped down, and they have the the new leadership that's that's supposedly in place. But I just want everyone. Not to be fooled, you know. I definitely want the world not to be fooled in thinking that Africa Bambata is not part of the Zulu Nation. Don't be fooled. Bam owns the Zulu Nation. He owns that name. You know, that's his organization. He's the founder, right? He's the founder. You know, it's it's his organization. He owns the name. So, the only person that can uh, uh, make him step down is himself. Right, right. You know, so my so you thing think he's is still in the in the he's still operating the Zulu Nation then, kind of like how like when they send like a gang leader to a prison like far away, but they're still operating it from that prison. From the inside. Ex- ex- exactly. You know, so my thing is, you know, if. You know, and and I know the 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 ones who did not know about this, and I know they mean well. You know, with the letter, and I I definitely do. You know, I I I know they they they're, they're sincere with it, but I really think they need to start the 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 ones who, you know, who are sincere and really mean it. I really think they need to start their own organization because that Zulu Nation is ten. Tainted, you know. Um, he still owns it, and I can't respect that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that. I, I, I mean, Bam even molested my best friend, my childhood best friend, and it 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 bothers me, you know, to see this man lie. You know, I remember when I was when I was younger. You know, and when I did tell, you know, my my best friend, you know, I remember me crying and I remember us embracing each other. And then to find out after all of these years that Bam also molested him too. Yeah, man, yo. Um, can I, hi, oh, hi, Ron. My name is Elaine Riddick. And I understand mm-hmm. everything that you have gone through and what you're saying. And I agree with what you're saying. But I thought they had asked him. I know that they um, first, I remember reading the story a while ago, and first I I know I read that they did deny and they did uphold him. But then later on I read that they asked him to step down. And uh, But like you said, it, that don't mean that it's so. You know, since mm-hmm. he is the founder of the Zulu Nation, so he can, they can't just take his his company away from him, his organization nope. away from him like that. So he might, you know, just, to, just put down the publicity a little bit. Um, you know, they might have he might be working behind the scene. However, you know, I'm sorry for what happened to you. I empathize with what happened to you because it happened to me too. But um, I was reading. Somewhere, I think you were 14 years of age when this first happened to you. Am I right? I was 15. I was in the ninth grade. 
okay, 15, and he sort of, you sort of ended up over at his place, and you went in the mm-hmm. room somewhere, and he was right in there with you. Mm-hmm. A few sec, a few minutes later, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember reading the article. Um, yeah, we have this happening to a lot of our children, and like you, you know, um, um, uh, we, again, it happened to me, and, um, you know, I didn't know because I was threatened. And if I'm not mistaken, with you, he was also, wasn't he giving you money? Um, Maybe, or buying you gifts or whatever it was. Um, I had got um, a phone call um, by two high-ranking members of the Zulu Nation, and they had told me um, that Bam wants this to go away and how much do I want. Um you know, it's, this wasn't about money. You know, I, I had took offense when they had, you know, told me that because um, this wasn't about that. This is about me getting this off my chest. This is about right, but it was happened. something that happened to you. Didn't it happen more than one time? Yes. Yeah. So I think that's what I want to say. And uh, oh my God. Um, I, I I totally again I totally understand what you're saying, and like you, I too when I was raped I had to keep it to myself, you right. know, and it was very confusing, you know, because you you can't say anything. I was threatened, you know, by a mm-hmm. grown man, and you know, um, wow, you know, this is sort of bringing back memories, and like I was saying, I can understand how a child feel when they're being molested. You know, and mm-hmm. this other person is the more mature adult that's doing it, and then you started blaming yourself, like you did something wrong, or did I cause this to happen? You know, so it seems like you know you either take on another personality, or you either you know go into yourself and you know, you know that's just a little over over overbearing. You know, yeah, that's and that's a little what I did overbearing. That. You know, that's what I did. You know, I, I went into myself, um, you know, especially around uh, my late teens. Um, I started hanging by myself, and it, and to this day, um, if you see me, I'm always by myself. Um, well, I don't trust. I don't trust anyone. I, I keep to myself. I, I don't know. And you know, it was. I, I just wish that didn't happen to me. Yeah, it's just like, you know, you're wearing it on your shoulder or, you know, even when you was a teenager, after it happened, what happened is that you probably felt like everybody knew, you know, it's all over you. It's on your, written on your forehead. So, you know, I, you're ashamed. I, I understand that. And, and I wanted to follow up with that, Ron. Um, you know, when, when this um, was going on, at the time, were you threatened as far as, you know, like, hey, if you tell anybody I'm going to do this or that? Because they usually threaten you or your family. Were you, were you threatened as a kid? No, I wasn't I wasn't um, threat, threatened. Um, I felt that I couldn't say anything, you know, because if I did, I felt that something would have happened to me or my family. But as mm-hmm. far as verbally telling me, oh, this is gonna happen. This, no, they, no, 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 no one threatened me. I didn't say anything. <laughs> well, yeah, you just um, kept it to yourself, and and and, mm-hmm. and you know, understandably so. Like you said, Elaine, uh, you know, um, you're afraid to come forward. But now that you have come forward, do you get a lot of people coming up to you in the streets and and say, "Hey, man, because of you, I decided to come forward." Yeah, I, I get that every day, you know, I get that every day. And, you know, that's why I'm I'm out here and I'm I'm speaking about it more you know, um speaking about it more because you know, especially here um in New York State, um, you know, they have a certain time up until twenty two years old that you can say say, you know, or, or press charges or anything which I think is absurd. But, you know, my thing is I'm just trying to let people know, especially 
kids and teenagers, you know, that if something does happen to you, just say something, you know, just, right. just say something. You know, right. don't 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 wait till till it's too late. You know, because I well, I, I don't made think a pro- they should be. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Go ahead on. No, I was gonna say I made a promise to myself um, when this happened uh, that before I die, I'm gonna let the world know what happened to me, and that's what I'm doing now. I I don't think that there should be a statute of limitation when um one of the one of the dogs yeah raped that needs the child to be uh... and. Revised. Exactly. Is that what you guys were walking for yesterday? Yeah, that's what we was walking for, and and hopefully, you know, I'm 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 very very confident that um that the law will be changed. I think yeah. so because in some states it depends on where you live at. Because I re- I remember there are some states that don't have a statute of limitation because nope. like for instance like look at the Bill Cosby thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, there is no statue. There was, but now they it's been lifted, I believe. And right. in other in in other places, I remember recently hearing and reading where uh, these people molested these children when they were younger, and they came forward and started talking. And now you know they're they're in court. You know, so I don't know about New York, and maybe you know there's some um. Some kind of way, you know, if you could go, I don't know what court you go to, and you can file a claim, a personal claim, in the court and let them hear you and let the court make the decision on whether they should bring charges against, because this is a public figure you're talking about, and maybe, just maybe, you might have some type of justice there. Right. You know, I, I like with me. I, it took me. Um, I, I don't know if you've heard of me. My name is Elaine Riddick. I'm a victim of the eugenics forced sterilization program. It took me over 40 years, over as long as in Roe v. Wade, to get North Carolina to give me compensation because of my persistence. You know, right. I wouldn't let them say no to me. It took me over 40 years when they would say no. I would be, I would even get even louder, you know. Right. So it got to the point where they apologized to me, they gave me compensation, and they took the rules off the book. You have right. to be persistent. If someone did, are, are wrong, you looking to uh, bring this uh, some type of a uh, lawsuit up against uh, uh, Bambata? Or um, Everybody, you know, they, they they asked me that. Um, I had never really even thought about it. Well, know. he took away he took away something precious. He actually took away your, your manhood. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. You know, let's be honest. He t- Do you think the Tourette's came from this um, uh, awful uh, atrocity that, that that he inflicted upon you? No. Or did you um, have Tourette's um, before that? You, you know, to, to, you're born with Tourette's. Tourette's okay, is, um, okay, you're born yeah. with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. My bad. But I didn't mm-hmm. know if if something like that could be inflicted by uh, trauma, you know, especially uh, at a young they age. Say, no. Yeah, they, they say, um, you know, trauma brings it out. Makes it worse. Okay, mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. And um okay, what about uh now now you, 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 a lot of people look up to you uh for doing this, you know, especially people that have been through it. Now what about backlash? Uh how do you deal with uh pro Bambada people? You know, cuz obviously there are some like, like you know uh out there. How do you, you know deal in with the them? Be- in the beginning, um, you know, I, I, I will read, you know, different comments that you know that people would have, you know, on the internet, and you know, first, you know, it's like, you know, like how dare you, you know, but then I didn't even pay attention. I didn't even pay attention to it, you know. But um, I, have, I have not, you know, ran into anyone to have any backlash or. 
or anything. You know, it's um, I, I I've been getting support, you know, all over the world. Um, you know, from from actually, you know, day one, it was it it was more support than 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 anything. Oh, that's good. That's good because usually uh, a lot of times. You know, you 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 know, there's there's a flip side coin where there's other people on the other side, and and uh, I'm glad you're not, you know. Getting yeah, you you can't pay attention. Or, you you can't pay attention to those people. You you, you can't. You know, you block it out. You know. You, yeah. You can't pay attention to that. And then, uh, uh, yeah, because initially, um, you being the first one to uh, come out and speak about this. Of course, you know, the, the, right away he was denying um, everything, and and then more people started to come out, and then he started to get quiet. Um, you know, uh, it, to me, like I said before, I would have to, I would have to vigorously defend myself if I was innocent. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's just the way I look at it, and I don't see him vigorously. Defending himself I don't know if it's His legal team telling him not to Or what But uh, I don't know I, th- I don't know I think but All I know is I commend you out. for speaking out um, yes, And exposing this situation Because you know and, and, and another thing You know when Karis one made those comments about Oh man you can't take away what he did in hip hop I said this on the show before too I don't care what you do you know, uh, uh, the moment you harm a kid, you could have ten NBA championships. Those don't mean a damn thing. The yep, moment you molest so a child, and that's the way I look at it. So that's the way I look at it too. What he did for hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know, I look, and, uh, I look at it. You know, I look at it that that way too. And um, you know, speaking about you know hip hop, you know um. I I I feel, you know, I I feel good that I did speak out, you know. Um, so now, you know, people, I'm I am, you know, living proof that you know that this does happen um, in hip hop, you know, and 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 I feel good, you know, about that. You know, this has been a hidden hidden secret, you know, one of the mm-hmm. most hidden secrets in hip hop, and um, you know, I I, I feel good that. I got the strength um, to be able to tell the world, you know, the untold secret of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I remember uh, uh, many uh, years back, Wendy Williams was talking about um, that there was gay rappers, uh, and she had a list. Now, I, now that I, you know, this comes out. You know, and you wonder who else. You know, who who else is is doing this, or who else well, is, is, is harming boys? Well, I mean, you can't. You know, you 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 can't say, you know, that because someone is is gay, they're pedophile. You know, that that's that. You know, that's you you can't do that. You know, um, because I have. I have a lot of friends, you know, who are gay and they're not pedophiles. You can't, you know. Oh, you, yeah. I, I understand. You, I, I meant, you know, in, I, you know, within but, you know, body situation. Right. You know, you, you know, you know, um, um, like if there are, you know, gay rappers, you know, um, you know, they try to say in hip hop, there's no gay, there's no gay, you know, rappers, or there's no, you know, gay this, there's no, like, you know, to me, this, what I just did has changed the course of hip hop forever, you know. And I yeah. feel if you are gay and you're rapping, so what? So what? So what about you know? Hollywood? I mean, I mean, you know, I understand that they are molesting a lot of kids in Hollywood. Well, Corey Feldman came out about that. Said there was a a yeah. huge pedophile ring in Hollywood. So did Elijah. Uh, uh, what's that kid's name? Elijah Wood, I think. He said the same thing. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, yeah. shows. You know, this is this. You know, this is. You know, 
this is for everybody. There's pedophiles everywhere. You know, just because someone is a celebrity doesn't mean that they're not a pedophile. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, and, and like we were talking about earlier, it goes at the highest uh, levels of power in the world, too. There's sex slave rings. There's, uh, you know, child prostitution everywhere. Um it's just uh it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. I yeah, they're just taking about... these little kids. Go ahead, Al. No, I, I was just going to say, Lane, sorry to cut you off. I heard something okay. about that there was a supposed book. I forget who did. Did you tell me about that, Mac J? That there was a book that uh, supposedly uh, Bam, uh, that Bambada Bam supposedly had with uh, uh, mm-hmm. images of, of, of people in there. Did you hear anything about this, Ron? Yeah, I know about the book. And and did you ever see this particular book? Yeah, I I've seen it. That's crazy, mm. man. Yeah, yeah, it is because um, you know it's it's. Uh, is there anybody in that book that has come forward or or? or that you've talked to that you think might come forward? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to say this, that, you know, a lot of, you know, um, people have told me that, you know, this had happened to them too. You know, that's that, that's about most that I'm, you know, going to say about the book. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, because you, it's, it, it's up to them ultimately if they want to come and say, you know that it happened to them too, but uh, mm-hmm. just knowing that that is out there is is uh, is scary in itself. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know. We talked about in the show uh, there was a priest uh, who worked at a, a deaf academy, and during the course of um, I want to say twenty or thirty years, he molested over two hundred deaf children. Uh, yeah. At this Catholic uh, uh, home for the deaf, and um, that was swept under the rug by uh, former Pope Benedict uh, because mm-hmm. uh, he knew about it for many decades. And um, I mean, you hear numbers like that: two hundred, uh, one priest. If you were to, to guess, how many would you say? Um, how many would you say that that, that were possibly molested in in this situation? Um, I don't know. I don't want to comment on on that because I because I, I don't know. I respect that definitely, definitely. Um, you know, but uh, I, I I tell you what, Ron. Um, once again, we can't thank you enough for not only coming forward um, and, and shedding light on this, but also preventing future occurrences because uh, you know there could be other children in danger uh, yeah, right now as we speak and yeah, hopefully you know, I, that I, what you've done is prevented that from occurring yeah and I thank you so much and um, you know hopefully you know my, my, my book you know that I did you know it, it speaks about my life and what I went through and I you know I, I just hope that you know the book can, you know, help help people. Um, you know that are you know the dep- going through depression or that you know has been molested, and I just you know hope that my life you know can definitely um, help someone. Um, and the book is called Impulse Urges and Fantasies, and um, you know people can get the book at uh, Amazon dot com or at bon- Barnes and Noble. It's oh, uh, go so out and get that, folks. Impulse, urges, and fantasies by Ron uh, Ronald Savage. Get that today, like you said, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, I look forward to reading that myself, and uh, hopefully we can have you come on the show again in the future, Ron. I really thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Is there any uh, anything you. else uh, you got a website or anything um, you want to uh, mention before uh, we go off here? Yeah, they can um um have a website. It's uh uh ronaldsavage.com. 
RonaldSavage.com. Everybody, go to that. Support this man. He does walks for children. You know, uh, he's, he's a children's rights advocate and activist. Um, a very courageous man. Again, I want to thank you for coming on the show. You take care of yourself, Ron. Thank you.